Hello, and welcome to the Renaissance English History Podcast, Tutor Minute, your mostly daily dose for all things related to medieval and Renaissance England. So today I'm going to talk about Elizabeth of York. She was the kind of founding mother of the Tudor dynasty, and that was because she was married to Henry VII. So Henry VII, who's the first Henry Tudor, we talked about him and how his lineage was kind of odd because he was descended from bastard children on one side, um, the illegitimate children of the mistress of John of Gaunt. And then on the other side is um, Catherine of Valois on his, um, on the Tudor side. Um, it was a family of, of squires. So Catherine of Valois, who had been the queen of England uh, in, in the 1420s up to the 1420s or so, um, she had married her squire, Owen Tudor, and um, Henry Tudor comes from, from that side. So on his mother's side, Margaret Beaufort, we've got the family of, of um, the illegitimate children of John of Gaunt. And on his father's side, the, the Tudor side, you've got like squires, right? So not this kind of illustrious um, sort of background. But because England kind of killed off all of the nobility in the Wars of the Roses, he was what was left. So he um, he had actually lived in exile for most of his life. Um, his mother, Margaret Beaufort, had sent him away to protect him because he did have a claim to the throne. And so he was in Flanders and um, he spent most of his time outside. But that's him. So I want to talk about Elizabeth of York, his wife. And, you know, I don't want to just remember her as his wife because it's not very fair to her. She was her own person besides just being his wife. Um she was born in the mid 1460s, 1466, and she was born right into kind of all of the drama of the Wars of the Roses. Um, the Wars of the Roses is this whole separate, the, they called it the Cousins War at the time. Um, it, it lasted for nearly 50 years. It wasn't just an entire war the whole time. It was just kind of, there were period, long periods of, of peace. Um, and then when a monarch would die, there would be all this fighting over who was the next person to succeed him and um and there was just a lot of infighting and it, like i said england kind of killed off most of their nobility elizabeth was the daughter of elizabeth woodville and edward the fourth who was the king um at the time and elizabeth woodville is her own really interesting story she was actually a commoner and the story goes that she had petitioned Edward as he was uh, going through her village uh, for some land that she was owed. She was the widow. Uh, she'd been married before. So she was the widow of, of somebody who had died actually fighting against Edward in the Wars of the Roses. Um, and she was due kind of a, a widow's dower. Uh, and so she met him on the street and he fell in love with her. You know, that's how the story goes. And um, Elizabeth Woodville was, uh, or Elizabeth of York was one of their children. So um, she, from the get-go, was born into this really dramatic situation with these kinds of, with her cousins killing each other and her family killing each other. Her brothers were the sort of famous princes in the tower who were the next heirs to the throne. They were Edward's sons. But when Richard III took power, he, uh, he sort of usurped them and uh, probably murdered them. I don't know. The jury's still kind of out. The, it, it's not... 100%. If you ask David Starkey, it is 100%. But um, Channel 4 in the UK did a, a trial of Richard III, which is on YouTube. Totally fascinating if you want to geek out on it. Um, in the 1980s, where they actually put Richard on trial um, in a regular setting at the Old Bailey. And, uh, well, I won't tell you the verdict, but it's not 100% certain that um, he, he did kill his nephews. Um, but anyway... Uh, Either way, Elizabeth of York, her brothers were killed or went missing somehow, kidnapped. Um, their claim to the throne was, you know, just thrown to the side by Richard. And she was originally um, meant to be to marry Henry Tudor because her mother, Elizabeth Woodville, had aligned with Margaret Beaufort when once Richard had um, taken over the throne. Um, Margaret Beaufort and Elizabeth Woodville kind of got together and said, all right, we're going to have Elizabeth of York marry Henry Tudor, and that's going to bring together the Tudors and the Yorks. And the whole song and dance was that it was going to, to bring peace after this time of horrible war. 
um, and, and it would finally bring peace. And, you know, honestly, a lot of times people ignore Elizabeth of York and say she was kind of boring because she largely did that. Um, she didn't, she wasn't very dramatic. And, you know, it's funny because on either side of her, either generation on, on either side of her, there's all this drama. So, you know, her mother was Elizabeth Woodville with all of this drama of a commoner who'd been married before marrying a king and they married in secret and all of that. And then the generation after her, her son, Henry VIII, um, had his whole drama with all of the queens. So there's all, all this kind of drama on either side. And then with her as well, um, in her generation, there was all this sort of drama over who was going to get the throne. But it, it wasn't so much kind of drama coming from the queen. Um, it was just drama all around her. I'm saying drama a lot. But, um, but anyway, so she just, she kind of just did her sort of duty as a queen and she bore sons and she was very loyal to Henry the seventh. The evidence shows that they actually have quite a, a sort of caring relationship. Um, there had been a rumor early on before Henry became uh, King that she was going to marry Richard the third, who was her uncle. Um, how much truth there is to that is, is still up for debate. Um, at, uh, and, you know, I, I'm not sure it's it hasn't been proven, but Philippa Gregory in her historical novels has has a field day with the Elizabeth of York, um, Richard III sort of love affair that maybe happened. Um, but anyway, it does show the the evidence does show that by the time she married Henry, um, they did have a, a very good relationship. And in fact, when their oldest son, Arthur, Henry VIII's oldest brother, when Arthur died, there's this very sweet story of how when they found out um, Henry VII had found out first and he was just totally broken down, just totally a wreck. Of course he was. And um, she came to comfort him and said, you know, well, we're still young enough. We can have more children and and it'll be okay. And she kind of kept it together long enough to comfort him. And then she left the room and then she broke down as, as you would. And she just completely lost it. And um, her, her ladies came in and fetched Henry and said, you have to come and, and help her. And, you know, he then came and, and comforted her and, and was very loving and, and sweet. And also, um, there were some pretenders because the princes in the tower were never found. Um, there were some pretenders who were constantly kind of coming up, uh, and saying that they were either one. And the main one was Perkin Warbeck, uh, who said he was the Duke of York. And when he surfaced, he had a lot of support from European leaders and, and, um, you know, she largely stayed very, very loyal to her husband, even though he was a Lancastrian and she had been brought up hating the Lancastrians. So she never kind of involved herself in the politics, which, um, she probably was really sick of it having grown up right in the middle of it. Um, and either way, she just lived this very quiet life, um, bearing sons and, uh, but she was, I, I don't mean to downplay that she, she was involved with, um, diplomacy in in certain respects people looked to her for favors because they knew that she that Henry talked to her they were very they were very close um but she didn't have a lot of drama so that's that's the kind of keyword for Elizabeth of York is not a lot of drama um so this went way longer than a minute it's like 8 minutes and a half right now so to learn more about the Renaissance English History Podcast, you can go to http colon slash slash englandcast.com, E-N-G-L-A-N-D-C-A-S-T dot com, or you can go to facebook.com slash englandcast. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.